Kicking off today is the man who edited and helped launch Wired Magazine and one of the first people to write about modern artificial intelligence. Please welcome to the studio the AI OG himself, Kevin Kelly. Oh, I Thank like you. it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not? Uh, I have heard you described, sir, as a senior maverick. And what exactly is a senior maverick? Because if someone called me a senior maverick, I just, you know, I just retire. I drop the mic and I just walk away. A <laughs> uh, senior maverick is somebody who um, does not report to anybody and has nobody to report to him. So I'm a dotted line off to the side. You're like the uh, Professor Emerit Emeritus of, exactly, of Wired. Exactly, right, exactly. Uh, and, and if you're a maverick, you, you need a goose. May I be your goose? <laughs> you can be the junior maverick. Junior maverick, okay. <laughs> I'll, I will. Thank you, I've always aspired. This is why my parents came from Pakistan. Yeah. Uh, but you have made it. I mean, that literally is the dream job. It is, it is the dream job. Um, it'd be nice if they paid me too, but I don't get paid. Bro, you're your senior <laughs> maverick. That's, it's, you're set. You're right. Exactly. Yeah. Just, just be comfortable with that. It's fine. But the reason why the, the, you have this title, and in, in the world of geekery yeah. and technology and wired, it is an auspicious title. It's a station. And the reason why you've reached it is because you've been in this game for a long time. Yeah. Even Wired itself is 30 years old as wow. of last month. You have aged me. Wired is 30, 30 years. 30 years. Man. I know. It seems incredible. I was a teenager when it first came out. I'm like, Wired. Yeah. Yes. Finally, the geeks and we're getting represented. Yeah. And so actually, that was a very deliberate thing on our part. It was, it was um, Lewis, the other, uh, one of the other co-founders, had this idea. It was his agenda. is We wanted to make geeks cool. Because until that time, Nerd, tell, tell, tell these Gen Zs. Nerd tell was not at all a cool thing. You were the guy or the gal who got beat up in school. And so we said, no, 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 no. These are the people making our new world. We want to make them into stars. We want to put them on the cover. We're going to promote them. And that's what we've did. And so now they're the cool kids at school. So some of them are the cool kids in school, but as you know, some of them have become the villains of the modern century. Right? That is true. Right? You, they become ever, so powerful that they're now the villains. Did yes. you ever, I mean, and just going with that theme, did you ever anticipate, right, because there is something there about the kids in school, right. like us, who were picked on. Right. They were called freaks and right. geeks and geeks. nerds. Yeah, right. And now, you look at South By, we're like, we want the next geek. Yeah. Who's the next geek? And right, in our right. lifetime... Those kids who were picked on, right. using their brain power, using technology, yep, yep, yep. have amassed so much wealth, have become rock right, stars, right. to the point in the last 10 years, the people that we kind of idolized right. have now become the villains. Right, it's exactly. Wild. Yeah. So, so, you know, it's like with great power, great Comes power. great responsibility. And so we're, we're having to step up. We, the geeks, are having to step up, be more responsible with this new power. And, you know, speaking of responsibility, uh, in our lifetime, I would say even in the last 15 years, technology, it, it's, it's so commonplace now that we're, try, it's, we're trying to keep pace. And we discover something, we unleash it to the world, and then two years later, we're like, oh, should have thought about certain things before unleashing it, right? The ethical aspect of technology, I think, has become something that we are dealing with right now. And I want to ask you about that, the ethics. Right. Sure, sure, sure. The ethics of unleashing technology without thinking about what we're actually right. unleashing. Mm -hmm. So actually, I think AI in this case is really, really remarkable because we have been thinking about and discussing. You have in particular. For 100 years. Mm. There's been no technology ever before where we have been discussing it for so long before it actually came. So, 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 so we've been rehearsing this for a century at least, trying to anticipate what's going to happen with AI, the number of science fiction stories. I mean, there was no anticipation of x-rays, say, people discussing it for 100 years before it came. And so, so, so we have had a lot of practice, and, and it's really helped. But the problem is, is that we can much easier, it's, it's much easier to imagine all the things that go wrong than it is to imagine the things that go right. And that's what's interesting about you is because you are an optimist. Right. We'll get into that. But it is true, right? Growing up, we had Asimov. We had uh, Kubrick. Kubrick. Uh, we had Skynet. Yeah. <laughs> will become operational. Yes, right. and, you know, for, and, and, and pop culture does shape our understanding yeah, of technology before it comes. And so for many of us now with ChatGPT, what we know is Skynet. Right. 
death, right. we'll become slaves to the robots. Right, exactly, right. Which are very, very unlikely. They're greater than zero possible, but they're very, very unlikely. I think the stance that we're going to have with these current generation of AIs is that of an intern, of a really, really smart alien intern. But the issue of trying to be responsible and trying to think about things is, is, is a really good one. And I think that the, 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 what we discover is that all these capabilities is that none of the inventors of these AIs had any idea that these were possible. Mm. I mean, that's the excitement that we're having right now, is that millions of people are using these, discovering capabilities that none of the inventors of it even knew it was possible. Chat GPT. And they can't. That's the thing, is these complex things, it's impossible to think of all the things. I call that thinkism. There's this idea that if we just think about things, we'll solve problems. But we have to use them in order to find out what they're good for or bad for. It's only through use that we discover all the capabilities. And so right now we're in this massive rush to use them, which is fantastic because we're discovering what they're good for and what they're bad for beyond what we could think, because we can't just think about these things. I, I want to talk about the good and the bad in a second, but I, I like the origin story. So we're going to take the DeLorean. Yeah. You know that reference. Sure. Back to when you were writing about this. And in sure. your lifetime, what you envision has come to reality. So let's take it, let's take it all the way back. When you were first writing about it, <laughs> what did you envision? So, so, so the it, if we talk about just kind of technology in general, I have to tell you, I went back to read the early wires from 30 years ago. In, in, in soft cover form with, exactly. your, with your fingers. And you all the it. other magazines at that time to see what we expected. Yeah. And here's something that was interesting. When the internet was first coming along, we were totally wrong, even wired. What we thought it was going to be was basically what we would say now is better TV. We mm. thought there would be like 500 channels of all these, or maybe 5,000 channels, but all the media companies would be making the content. That's not what happened. What happened was everybody started to make the content. Everyone with a smartphone. Everyone with a smartphone. Who, who, who writes Twitter? Everybody writes Twitter. You know, I mean, it's like We're all content creators. YouTube. Now. Yeah, exactly. That was not in the original vision. Mm. That was not what we were expecting. It was going to be the big yeah, network. Better TV. Yeah. Right. And it was kind of like, you know, downloading. It wasn't just like you interact with it. There was no upload. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And so there was no peer to peer. There was none of this many to many. Yeah. That was the revolution that we even didn't see. So um, in terms of AI, I think, again, we tend to think of the AI as the thing that does it. But what we're discovering is that it's it's actually a team, that, that the best chess player is not an AI, it's not the human chess master, it's a team of AI plus human. The best doctor who could diagnose things is not the AI, it's not the human doctor, it's the team of AI and doctor. And that's, again, was not in anybody's vision that, that the ultimate thing is this co-piloting this partnership between AI and humans. That's not something we expected, and it, I, I didn't expect that. And it is interesting because if you think about it, it's already here, like the yeah. smartphone, the smart watch, right? right? It's integrated with right. us. Right. And, and in the spoiler alert, if you see Battlestar Galactica, yeah. the end result is not robot domination or human domination, right, right, right. but right. coexistence. Exactly. So you think that's the future, coexistence? I do. I, I think, and I think the best frame or lens to think about AIs is not as slaves, not as pets, not as spirits or gods, but as artificial aliens, okay? People are terrified of aliens, sir. <laughs> I'm just, you just, you know, just letting you know, you just, you just triggered a bunch of people. We shouldn't be because, um, you know, it's, it's like the nice friendly ones, you know, Spock, uh, Yoda. E.T. E.T., right. And, oh, yeah, so you think, okay, so, you, so what you're saying is, listen, there's going to be coexistence with AI, see them as artificial aliens, right. uh, not as our future enslavers, not right, as right, right. conquerors, right. but uh, like E.T. Just right. give them some rhesus and they'll work with us. <laughs> right? Exactly. Okay. Right. So, and, and, and so the thing is, is I call them interns. Yeah, right you now. mentioned you have You have a quote. You said, um, dub AI as a universal intern, intern and partner. A personal intern. And so the idea is, is that... Um, 
um, you want to check their work. Mm. They, they do all this stuff for you. As they're doing right now with as, the as you do, But you have to check their work. You can't release it. It's embarrassing if you release the intern's work because they'll, that's, that's the intern. Because here's what it is. No, no disrespect to the interns here. We <laughs> love you and value you. Right, work but we got to check your work. We just got to check it, that's all. <laughs> right, exactly. And so the thing about these way these things are trained is, here it is, they are trained on all the human content that's been generated, the best and the worst. Mm. And so what they have, what they get out is they get the average. It's kind of like an average, middle of the road, bland, wisdom of the crowd kind of knowledge. And it's like, that's good, that's good enough, that's helpful, but that's not me, I need to- Well, it's not something. human. It's not human, yeah. exactly, it's an alien. It's, and that's the, that's the thing is, they're creative, but it's like, hmm, that's a weird, that's a little bit off. That's a kind of an alien creativity. They're, they're, they're funny, but it's like, hmm, <clears throat> that's a little weird sense of humor you have there. And so you, to make it more human, to make it more us, we work with them and we check their work. So a concern, right, because you just got me thinking, is you're like, oh, it's almost there, but something's off. Right. Can we get to what, deep fakes? Right. The point where, for those, we talk about deep fakes, and again, for those yeah, right. who don't know, it's when you're using a manipulation, right. and it could, it could be like I'm talking to Tom Cruise, even though I'm talking to the senior Maverick right. here, <laughs> and you release the video footage right. on YouTube, <clears throat> and from the naked eye, and from just, if you're just not really paying attention, you're like, oh, that, that's Tom Cruise, but it's not. Right. It's you. Right. And so the deception here, uh, uh, the, the fact that people rely upon an authority that is not human, thinking it's human, but it's AI. Doesn't that concern you? Well, in a movie, I don't care whether it's really Tom Cruise or not. But not a movie. I'm talking about, suppose, this interview. This is real well, life. That's, that's what I'm saying. I think sometimes we will care and sometimes we won't care. And when we do care, it'll be important to have that trust. So. For most of the time, we don't care. But when we do care, like in news, we're gonna say, no, 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 what's the source? I need to know this, what's the verification? This matters about whether it's real or not. And there, by the way, there are always ways to tell whether something's real or not. You can use AI to say, is that, is that AI? And it costs something, so there's a cost to it, and if we're willing to pay that, we can tell. But for many of the times, we don't care whether it's real or not, like in movies. But we will have a system, and we're going to starting to already, it's, it's to verify, you know, news saying, here are the rules, and we're not going to do this, and so can you trust that news service? And what it's going to come down to is we can't tell from looking at some text. Is that true or not? You can't really tell. You can only tell from the source. Is, is the source believable? Have they been reliable in the past? And so we really want to have that source embedded into things. And that's the only way we can trust. So this is the, the cynic in me, and my, my pushback is just living in 2023 yeah, America, yeah. And we, as we're surviving a pandemic. Right. No one trusts anything anymore. The source is, we are the content creators. You see someone promoting disinformation. Right. It goes from WhatsApp. You see, I have seen smart people, doctors on my WhatsApp thread say, I read this, Waj, is this right, real? Right. I'm like, you're the doctor. It's nonsense, why are you spreading this, right? So already, disinformation's rampant. Cynicism, we don't trust sources, we don't trust authorities, we feel our facts. And now that you put the deep fake and the AI in, to me what you're saying is it's just the example you right, just right. gave. In this current moment, it's gonna compound it. Or it will be misused by bad faith actors. I don't think we're there yet to have that, that type of uh, categorization of, oh, the source is legit, oh, that's good. Because yeah. right now it's all the wild, wild west. Everyone's yeah. lost. So I'm, opt I'm an optimist, and I think what this is doing is provoking this, this drive to actually try to embed sources and to come to rely on them rather than the superficial um, appearance of things. Mm. And I think this is what's happening. So, so I think this is a, a teachable moment right now. I think so, sir. This is a teachable <laughs> moment for all of us. For all of us. As we're literally emerging from a pandemic. Exactly, and we're realizing, oh my gosh, this system has to be better, and um, what are some of the ways in which we can um, do this so that we can at least identify what, what, what the consensus is? And that's, this is, of course, a challenge for science, is that science, is a continuous revision mm. of what we accept as true. So, so what we're, and, and by the way, this whole thing with AI and generative um, ideas is, is that we're in the midst of kind of reevaluating how we decide something is true. Mm. This is a, 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 a and, and, and you know, like ChatGPT says something, so like, should we believe it or not? 
what would we accept or what would you accept from chat GPT as necessary for you to believe it? Mm. What are you going to require? Is it like a footnote to the footnote to the footnote? What would you yourself be comfortable in believing if it says, chat GPT says, well, you know, the capital of, um, of Laos is um, um, Timbuktu. Would you? It is not. <laughs> and, and, and what would it take to, for you to believe that otherwise? What would you have to see? And that's something we haven't really asked ourselves before. Well, I mean, and, I, and I think, you know, really, we're already in that situation because now you gave me that scenario. I'm thinking about myself. I'm like, oh, if it was on Wikipedia. Yeah. And so many of us, so well, you and me, yeah. sometimes are lazily were like, oh, yeah. Googled it, saw it on the wiki, must be real. Exactly. But, but that's not, as we know. It is not. It is not. There's four or five things on my Wikipedia entry that are not true. Sir, you have to update it. I can't update it. That's the whole point. Oh, yeah, because it's yours. Because it's mine. Oh. That's the, the etiquette is I don't have control over it. And the, uh, because you know why? In Wikipedia, they, they, um, d don't, they have to be published facts. It can't be f um, what they call first reporting. It means that's... Uh, right. So, but, so. But, but, but it's just an example, right? So, yeah. so it's, it's, I see the optimist in you. And, and speaking about uh, TV shows, all right? Right, right. <laughs> I think, and, and, and narratives. There, there is the dystopian narrative, right? I think most of us are in the Skynet part of it. But some... Some, if you've seen it, what they say is, okay, there's a Skynet part of it, right? There's the robo-apocalypse, yeah, 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 yeah. there's the, the misery, <clears> the climate <throat> change. But enough of us survive that we learn from the mistakes, <laughs> and then there's the rebirth. Right. Then there's the, the, the true revolution, egalitarianism. Right, right, right. So I see you as the person who takes us to that Yeah, part. yeah, yeah. So I am <clears throat> co-chair of the Long Now Foundation, and we have just about finished building this clock inside a mountain in West Texas that's going to tick for 10,000 years. The clock is 500 feet tall inside the mountain. There's an actual? It's an actual clock, clock. Inside a mountain. Inside a mountain, next to the Blue Origin spaceport in West Texas. And it's been built to tick for 10,000 years. And every day there, at noon, there's a melody that's played on some chimes that never repeats itself for 10,000 years. Every new day melody. A new melody. Okay, and the purpose of this clock which is to remind us to think long term, to think generationally, to be a good ancestor, mm. is to have that long term vision. It's, I call it the inshallah clock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, you know, you're such an optimist, but you know this, I'm talking to Gen Z even, uh, they're, they're beset with so many challenges, right. climate change, income inequality, and, and you know, it, it's interesting for me to hear how profound the pandemic was on them. I mean, two years yeah. of their formative life. And so when they talk to us old heads, and we're, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm an optimist actually as well, they're like, ha, huh. <laughs> we don't have money. We don't, right, right. climate change. Optimist about what? So looking at the camera, right, right. to that generation, that is not just cynical, but really they're going through things. What's the case for optimism? So, so, so you want to be as optimistic as you possibly can because really good, complicated things that we are, we'd like to have are not going to happen inadvertently. They will only happen if we can imagine what they would look like and then to believe that they are possible. They're not going to just happen haphazardly by themselves. So we have to have a vision of what it was that we would like and then to believe that they are possible to be made. And that's really the only way that the great things in the past have been made by people who believed and saw what they could be and then believed that they could come about and then made them. And so to, in the end, it's only going to be the optimists who are going to shape our culture. So you want to be on the side of the optimists to make your vision possible. Senior Maverick, it would be an honor to be your goose. <laughs> thank you. Junior sir. Maverick, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You can discover much more about Kevin and his work via his website, kk.org. We'll be back live at 11 a.m. today with the directors and stars of the new documentary, Going Varsity in Mariachi. I'm Mujat Ali. Thanks for watching.